Hi folks, this is Andy Skinner with Nevadon.com and the Ramp Program. In this video, I'm going to show you the new Moving Average feature in Ramp 8. It's under the More button. I'll click on More, and you can see it right down here, Moving Average Scanner. I'll click on that. This is the input form for the Moving Average Scanner. Now, I'm going to be scanning in real time. You can see right here that I've chosen Active Tick Real Time Data. I could just as easily do it on end of day free internet data. It really doesn't matter. I've selected 5 minute, 30 minute, 240 minute, and daily bars. And I'll be scanning the S&P 500. You can see that it's set up in rows. There are five potential rows here. And when I checkbox one of the rows, it turns on. I'm going to start with a single rule right now. This way you can have five moving average relationships that all must be met or any one of the five can be met. That is done right here with these two radio buttons. It says find charts that match all check rules. Find charts that match any check rule. So you can do it either way. You're always dealing in these rules with the relationship between two moving averages. Now in my first example, I want to simply find a stock with the closing price above the 50 bar moving average. So the closing price of a stock is simply the one bar moving average of it. So I'm going to take a one bar moving average based on the close and simple in this case. I'm going to request that it be above the 50 bar moving average calculated on the close and again a simple moving average. Uh, I simply want the closing price above the 50. Let's look over here at what bars we'll be scanning. It says bars back. The current bar is bar 1. So if I want to scan the current bar, I would have a maximum bars back as 1 and a minimum bars back as 1. If, for instance, I wanted to scan the last 3 days, I could simply put a 3 here, and that's the max bars back is 3, the minimum is 1, being the current bar. This setup allows for maximum versatility. You can see that I can choose my, a closing price, a low, high, open, an average price, which is high, low, over 2, or a high plus low plus close over 3 as my average price. As far as simple, you can select simple or exponential moving average on any rule. And here you can go above, below, crossing up, crossing down, or touching. I'm going to click Start Scan. And you can see the blue line becomes my 50 bar moving average. And it says right here, 50 is blue. Every chart within the S&P 500 that has a close above the 50 bar moving average is being shown. That is the simplest rule just to get started. Let's change this and let's say that we want a 20 bar moving average. Let's say we want it crossing up through the 100 bar moving average. Again, any time in the last three days, that looks fine to me. I'll hit Start Scan, and here we have the moving average crosses. That would be the 20 crossing up through the 100. And again here, the 20 is blue, the 100 is red. I'll close that and we'll look at some multiple rules. Let's add another rule. Let's say that I also want the 100 moving average based on the exponential above the 200. We'll have that one based on simple. It doesn't matter. You can put anything you want. Whatever you ask for, this is going to give you. Let's say that's for the current bar. So now we have two rules. And now we see three moving average lines. The green line, in this case, is the 200. So in our example, the 100 is always above the 200. And we always have a cross of the 20 over the 100 in the last few bars. I hope you can see how versatile this is. Let's do one where we use all five rules. We'll make one pretty simple. Let's say that for the last four bars, we want the low to be trading above the 50. The low of the bar above the 50. And we want it to test on the current bar. So on the current bar, we want it to dip below the 50, so the low below the 50, but to close above it. That's a 50 bar moving average test. So I'll turn on my first rule. And my bars would actually be 1 in this case, because I'm looking at a single bar. And I want its low, and we'll use simple as fine, to be below the 50 bar on based on a closing price exponential. That's fine. And this is for the current bar. So that's 1 and 1. So I want the low to be below 50. 
But I also want the close to be, whoops, that would be simple, above the 50. So traded below, closed above. And again, let's do everything simple. That would also be the current bar. So here, here's my first two rules. It dipped below the 50, it closed above. Now I could go ahead and start that scan. I don't know if we'll find anything. Here we go. Here's some 50 bar moving average test. Now I'll close that and let's go on. Let's say, but I also want the one bar simple moving average to be above the 50. But let's say this is based on the low. We wanted the one bar low above the 50. And let's say we want this to be yesterday. So now yesterday's low has to be above the 50. And let's just duplicate that. Let's say that I wanted the low uh, to be above the 50 on day 3. And I have one more rule, so let's use it. I have a one bar uh, moving average based on the low to be above the 50 on the fourth day back. There. And we're going to say find charts that match all checked rules. We want every rule to apply. Now I'll click on start scan. And we should find some good candidates that are testing the 50 bar moving average. There we have one. You see STX is pulling down towards the 50. It's been above it for the last several days. I'll zoom in. You see it's been all the lows have been above the 50. The low dropped below the 50 and it closed above it. It gave me exactly what I asked for. You can also do multiple moving averages. But let's say we want to catch some moving average crossings. So we want the 10 bar moving average to cross up through the 20 bar on the current bar. And let's say that we want the 20 bar, this would all be based on close by the way, the 20 bar based on close above the 50. And let's say we want the 50 bar above the 100. And let's say we want the 100. I got to be sure and get my closes in there. Based on the closing price, simple, above the 200. That would set up a bully setup. And again, for every rule, I would like this just to be the current bar. And I'll turn this rule off. There we go. Let's review this. I have the 10 bar moving average crossing up through the 20 today. Uh, the 20 above the 50 today. The 50 above the 100 today. And the 100 above the 200. Now this is real time. I said today, but it would be current bar. And I'm asking that all of the rules apply. I'm just going to click Save Settings, and I'll start that scan. Here I go. It shows me my moving average colors. They're all defined up here. Because the colors change all the time, depending on the rules you set up, you can look up here just in the heading to see what color is which. Here's your bullish setups where the moving averages are set up exactly as you asked for. I hope that you can see how versatile this scanner is. It was written to do virtually anything you want to do with moving averages. One last thing I'll show you that we haven't talked about yet. This box, minimum percent from a moving average line to be considered a touch. Let's say, for instance, that I want it to be within one half of a percent. And I want to find anything, current bar, that is closing, touching the 20 bar simple moving average today. I can find that. There we go. This is everything. It looks like they're not touching, but I asked for a half a percent deviation, so they're all within half a percent. And of course, I can control that any way I want to with this number right here. Here, show support and resistance lines. If I turn that on, all of the automatic support and resistance lines, we call Bob charts, are overlaid right over the top of the moving averages. I'm going to do one last thing. I'll go over to Bob Charts. Because that's a little bit busy, I'm going to ask it to say the number of lines to show. Instead of three, I only want to see the closest support and closest resistance. One single line. Now I can go back to my moving average scanner and we'll run that same scan. Let's say we want it in 0.2%. Now you can see the closest support and resistance level along with the moving average touch. I hope you can see how versatile this is and that whatever you do trading or scanning with moving averages, it is very probable that you can set up your custom scan here. With that, I'll wrap up this video and I'll see you in the next video. Watch for new things coming very soon.